Greetings, welcome back to Black Hair News, where we are discussing various things surrounding climate change. <clears throat> I mentioned in a previous video, just a couple days ago, that um, I feel like I had a blueprint. Lots of people have blueprints, so this is nothing, you know, uh, nothing original in the way of thoughts or ideas. Um, as far as having an idea, that's not original. I feel like my ideas might be slightly more original, maybe. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Obviously, the the main problem with solutions right now, um, given the time, given the time we have to fix whatever it is we need to fix, whether it's two years or ten years or twelve years, uh, we have very little time, and the the biggest roadblock to actually implementing any kind of plan to mitigate or uh, turn around the sixth mass extinction and possibly make it less of an extinction. Um, the biggest roadblock is um, getting people to understand what the actual problem is. The problem is that most people don't even, you know, they might know about climate change. Most of them might not know much of what's happening, most of them might, might, most of them obviously don't know that it's as bad as it is. Obviously, a lot of people are unaware that we are in serious, serious danger and serious trouble, and they don't want to know. If you try to talk to them about this, it's really, really difficult because people really want to believe that everything's going to be okay and they can continue living the life that they're living and living in the paradigm that they're living in continuing to you know buy and have and do all the things that they think that they should be able to buy and have and do this is the biggest problem so uh what i what i wanted to do is just kind of talk about <clears throat> something i thought about a few years ago which was uh, a couple of years ago on facebook actually during the 2016 presidential election for a, for a little while um i was posting things about a hypothetical presidential run, like if I were running for president, I would do this. And it was actually kind of interesting, the, the answers I got, the responses I got, um, you know, because some of, the, some of the concepts, some of the ideas were, were pretty off the wall, pretty radical. Uh, one of the ideas was if I were president, I would, um, I would make sure that I would give away homes and land on the condition that everybody learn how to farm and grow their own food, become uh, self-sustaining. Um, basically, there would be, you know, there wouldn't be anybody homeless, um, and anybody who wanted some land in order to grow food or have a homestead or make a homestead would be provided with, you know, a parcel of land in which they could grow enough food to sustain themselves. And obviously this would even work better if you had a community of people close to you who were all growing or doing different things and all contributing to a communal pile, right? Um, this would be a great way to start to alleviate and um, go in the opposite direction of, you know, the way that we're living that is causing climate change. <clears throat> anyway, so, I kind of updated this this uh, hypothetical presidential run because I think that at this point, um, obviously we need grassroots movements on a local level. We need to, um, I'm not even, am I even timing this? I've already been talking for a long time and I don't know. I didn't want to make this a long video. Uh, I want to make this a short video and then have other videos following it up and maybe talking more in depth about this. but. We obviously need grassroots movements at a local level in order to change things, to turn things around, to change people's minds, to show people a different way to live. But the problem is, is that we're not gonna move, we're not gonna make a big enough movement without something at a national and a global level. Um, so what better way to spark a global movement to mitigate climate change, a global movement. Obviously, the Extinction Rebellion in the UK is um, inspiring, if not promising. Um, they're at least raising awareness about the fact that there is an extinction happening. <clears throat> so 
what better way to raise awareness about this problem uh, than to have a hypothetical or an actual presidential run in the United States <clears throat> Um, showing that the United States was a radical leader against, you know, fighting climate change. I know right now that we have the antithesis of that. We have the person that is telling everybody else across the globe that it doesn't matter. Um, that climate change is, nobody cares about climate change anymore. And we're just going to go ahead and devour the planet. That is the most cynical viewpoint you could possibly have. If you are a, a, a true doomer, then Trump is your guy, right? If you're, if you're like, over the falls, it doesn't matter. We're just, you know, just enjoy life till the end. Then Trump is your man. Trump is your president. Um, because they know that we're doomed. They know that we're fucked. They know that we're going to be at 7C by 2100. And they're wiping away all regulations in order to just clear the path for rampant consumerism, for ra rampant capitalism, for rampant destruction of the earth. That's what they're doing. They're saying, over the falls. Let's just get what we can while we can get it. So if Trump is not your guy, and if you might have, you know, some ideas about going out kicking and screaming, then possibly let's move all the way to the other side, which is a radical, hypothetical, and possibly removing the hypothetical part, radical presidential run in the United States to, fly, uh, to uh, fight climate change and spur action globally to inspire other countries to do the same thing. So here's um, the platforms of this presidential run. This is my teleprompter. Um, I'm not saying that I'm running for president, um, but somebody who might, might run for president on a radical climate change platform would, would do these things. Number one would be divert the US military and its budget into a humanitarian peacekeeping force immediately. Executive order, done. Urge all other countries to do the same and form a global Earth force. You have a space force, you have the Air Force, you have the, you know, et cetera. Earth force to destroy all nuclear weapons and decommission all nuclear plants and safely dispose of the fuel. Shoot it into space, perhaps, right? That's what we, we can do with our, our great space technology, is load all this fuel onto um, rockets and hope they don't explode on the way out of our atmosphere and um, possibly get rid of them that way. Next, we need to rapidly deal with global dimming and attempt to remove CO2 from the air. As we wean ourselves off of fossil fuel, we have to lower the CO2 in the air so that there is a chance to mitigate warming and feedback loops already underway. Next would be limit all families to two children and urge other nations globally to do the same. Brace for the impacts of a collapsed economy by providing food and shelter for all citizens free of charge. Housing and land will be given away and all citizens will be urged to grow their own food organically, either individually or in co-ops. Next. All industry will be nationalized and stopped immediately except for those engaged in providing services for people. Owners and stockholders will be allowed to keep their assets but under strict adherence, strict adherence to the new laws and will be taxed at the new rate. The new laws will outlaw all private transportation, only shared electric vehicles and public services public service vehicles, and heavy equipment will be allowed. All air traffic will be halted except for military traffic and public service requirements. All international shipping will be halted except for those engaged in public service. <clears throat> for profit, for-profit capitalism will be abolished. The Federal Reserve will be abolished. Fiat cur currency will be issued for exchange of goods and services, but any wealth above $100,000 will be taxed at the rate of 90%. All education and healthcare will be provided for free indefinitely. Fossil fuels will be allowed, but only to power necessary infrastructure. All fossil fuels will be nationalized and overseen by the military. All infrastructure will be quickly converted to renewable technologies where possible. All energy use will be strictly rationed and everyone will be urged to live as low energy intensive lifestyle as possible. This will be fun. <laughs> Is it, that'll be one of the campaign slogans of this presidential run. It'll be fun. 
y'all think this could work? I don't know. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's my, my platform for a radical climate change presidential run. Uh, let me know what you all think in the comments below. Um, and I also wanted to just say that I think, you know, so I think that people might be surprised. So obviously a lot of these things are, are just things that would make people's heads explode, especially anybody in power, anybody in the government, anybody in, who is, you know, running a corporation or is, you know, upper management or any, anything, anything like that. Um, anybody who really is invested in our paradigm and living the way that we live is going to, you know, they're going to be like, what the, what the heck is that? The, the thing is though, is that the, um, regular guys and gals out there, people who are aware, people who understand what's going on are going to, they're going to say, Hey, there's something to this. Um, as we saw in the last presidential race, people really want radical change. They absolutely want radical change. Um, Trump represented the most radical change of the two given options, but it, actually the most radical change of the three given options was Bernie Sanders. He just wasn't allowed in the race. And he wasn't allowed in the race for very, um, very, very obvious reasons, for very solid reasons, that he was the most disruptive of all the candidates. He was the most dangerous of all the candidates to the status quo. Um, but people really want radical change. I'm going to link in this article um, or in this video in the description box. Uh, I'm going to link a Jimmy Dore video. So don't, don't freak out on Jimmy Dore. Okay. I love Jim, Jimmy Dore. You know, I do. Lots of people love Jimmy Dore. Um, but if you have a problem with Jimmy Dore, just wipe away the fact that it's Jimmy Dore and listen to the facts of this video. The facts are this, <clears throat> that, um, People like progressive uh, initiatives and programs that people want Medicare for all, people want education for all, people want, people want uh, reform in a very real and, and significant way. Uh, they, I don't think that they are getting it with Trump and I think they know that they're not getting it with Trump. Um, I think that they would embrace some radical, some radical platforms and at the very least in our in the way that our system operates is that if you give somebody a push from the from the left or from whichever side but we'll say the left you give somebody a push from the left if you push for more progressive platforms you put them in a position of having to adopt them or at least respond to these uh requests or respond to um, these platforms and hopefully embrace them because the more that you ignore them or denounce them or trounce them as you know the Pelosi's and the Feinstein's and all the you know corporate Democrats are doing telling us that they, we can't have this stuff the Clintons the more people are um, disillusioned with the Democrats the more people feel like they don't have any real choices and that's really the problem with overcoming Trump and overcoming um, the right, the the right movement that I don't believe is as as strong as people believe it is. Um, lastly, in this video, I would just like to say, um, th you know, we've got two years until the next presidential run. Um, the very least we can do is try to educate people about the problem that we're in. Um, there have been reports and studies and scientists saying that we really only have two years um, to start making major changes in order to avoid catastrophe. A lot of people on this channel would already would say that it's, that's already a done deal and there, there is no two years. But let's just say there's two years, hypothetically. Um, then obviously this radical presidential run has to happen by 2020. It has to happen. Um, and Trump has to be held accountable for his actions. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we can have people calling for his impeachment or, or his uh, 
exit from office um, by means of, of grave negligence uh, to, to the environment, grave negligence to the population of the planet. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how we do it. But maybe we just do it by getting him voted out, at least by offering some real solutions and offering offering some real platforms that people want to embrace instead of just saying, like, we have to get rid of Trump. OK, no, duh. How? How do we get rid of Trump? You have to actually have some things that are going to replace what he's doing with things that make sense, because the things that he's doing don't make any sense. And they're just outright malicious and dangerous and malignant. Uh, that's the end of this video. That's all I have for you tonight. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Let me know what you all think. We'll be talking more about this stuff in the future. I would like to, I would like to ramp up the conversations about what it is we can actually do in the world um, to make to make significant change. Until next time, peace.